Joy Reid is the host of The Readout right here on MSNBC, a graduate of Harvard University, the <laughs> defendant in today's ruling, and she joins me now. Roy, first, uh, Joy, let me, let me first just get your reaction to the ruling, which I think we all suspected was coming. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but given that it is your, your alma mater, I know you've been watching it closely. Yeah. What's your reaction to what, we, what happened today? And I, I, I will say I, I'm also a very, very proud of uh, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, who I was privileged uh, to know at Harvard University, one of the most brilliant human beings I've ever met and had a chance to know. Um, and her dissent, I thought, was scathing and perfect. Um, so, you know, I was not surprised because Clarence Thomas has been on a mission to dismantle every, um, in, every institutional attempt to help and aid not just black people, but any people who have been disadvantaged in this society uh, since he's gotten on the court. He, like Samuel Alito, appears to operate from a kind of rage, a sort of cold rage against the entire 20th century, the second half of the 20th century, which they find to be an affront to their own self-image and to their image of America as this country that is noble and that has always been noble and whose slaveholding founders were noble and really hated slavery and were just so pained at the fact that they had to own all these people uh, and that their wealth was derived from owning these people, but really they were good-hearted. And that's kind of what his concurrence discusses. But what I find fascinating is what you put forward, and I'm gonna now have to watch that whole front line that you just showed a piece of. Because let's just be clear, Clarence Thomas was born in Pinpoint, Georgia. He is of the Gullah extraction. Yep. He didn't even speak English until he was seven years old. He spoke the Geechee tongue and was so afraid to speak in front of white people because he was always told, don't speak Geechee in front of white people because it would embarrass you, that he almost never spoke at all. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a nun, a white nun, um, whose largesse helped get him through school and get him those good grades. He has had been assisted you know, by white patrons, uh, really his whole life, even now by very rich ones uh, as they fly him around the country. And to your very point, he seems to deeply resent all of the assistance he got, and he wants to make sure that nobody like him ever gets that kind of help again, because it helps his self-image so that he can lie to himself and fool himself and maybe hate himself a little less for having gotten help all along his path to the Supreme Court. And let's be clear, the most important thing to know about his confirmation, other than the fact that he's accused credibly of sexual misconduct, is the polling that got him over the line. And it was the polling that I very much remember. I was one of the few black folk who was against hmm. him. It was the polling that showed that about seven in 10 black people supported his ascension to the seat once held by the great Thurgood Marshall, and he is not his equal. It was black people's support that got wavering members of that Judiciary Committee Democrats, and wavering senators. They, they needed Democratic yes. votes. It was a Democratic Correct. majority. That's why Joe Biden is Correct. in those hearings running. They needed the Democratic Correct. votes. And it was only black people's support in those polls that got wavering Democrats to vote for him. And he has repaid black people with scorn ever since. Let me let me ask you a follow-up question about the, the, the pathos here. Because, I, I, by the way, the front line that we play clips of and slow burn, both about Clarence Thomas's trajectory, I cannot recommend them both highly enough. They're just exquisite pieces of journalism. And the story is fascinating. I mean, he's really one of yeah. the most interesting figures in American <laughs> life. I really believe this in, in terms of that trajectory. I mean, there's, there's a moment in Slow Burn where Joel Anderson, who's the fantastic host and the uh, academic Leah Wright Rigor, who wrote a great book about black conservatives, yeah. they're talking about their own experience in elite white dominated institutions, right? Of, of that kind of, that, that, that feeling that suspicion. OK, from from white folks. Oh, you're an affirmative action case. Now, in Thomas's case, that it, it's a defining anger of his life. Mm -hmm. But it's also real. And I, I feel a little weird as a white person being like, you know, I, I don't want to, like, say that what Thomas experienced was in any way not legitimate. Like, I, I think he comes by it honestly. But I'm curious how you think about it and you think about that. That sort of coded racism that comes in those in those institutions and circumstances and what yeah. it means for the broader question of whether we should have it constitutionally. 
Well, let, let me just be clear. I got into Harvard only because of affirmative action. I went to a school no one had ever heard of in Denver, Colorado, in a small suburb. I didn't go to Exeter or Andover. Yeah, I didn't right. have college <laughs> test prep. I just happened to be really nerdy and smart and have really good grades and good SAT scores. Right. But someone came to Denver, Colorado to look for me. A Harvard right. recruiter flew to Denver, and I met up with her at the Village Inn restaurant and did a pre-interview to get to to pull me into Harvard. I wasn't. I was pulled in, and the and the schools like Harvard and Yale that That's I got the, into affirmatively. Yes. and it was literally not saying we're going to take an unqualified person and put them right. in Harvard. Yes. We're going to take a very qualified person who we would never know existed and put them in Harvard. That's how I got there. That's how Katanji got there. That's how well, Justice Jackson, I should say. Justice Jackson got there. It's how Clarence Thomas got there. Right. But the minute I arrived from my majority black little town, Montbello in Denver, to Harvard, the first like week or two that I was in class, my presence was questioned by white people. I was in this big conference class hmm. where some white students st stood up and said, those students, the black students, they're only here because of affirmative action. It became a huge argument that we all ended up having. This was freshman year. I had never had my academic credentials questioned. I had never had anyone question whether I was intelligent until I got to Harvard. And it was a defining uh, point of my experience there. It's why I really was mis one of the many reasons I was miserable there my freshman year. Yeah. You felt completely out of place and people keep telling you you shouldn't be here and yet some of the people I went to school with were far less smart than me or the other right. black folk there. Right. They got in because their daddy and their granddaddy. I right. went to school with somebody whose name was on one of the buildings. <laughs> You're going to school with people whose names are on the buildings, who are third and fourth generation legacies, whose parents pumped money into Harvard to get them right. in. But that affirmative action is okay with this majority. They said that the people who benefited from slavery, their descendants, who are so far ahead of black folk in terms of opportunity, that will never Ever catch up to them. I don't care how many Oprahs we get. Those people's affirmative action is a okay because those people yeah. can pay for fancy trips for them. Yeah. But you people who want to get in just because of your brains, but you're not from a legacy, too bad. You can't come in. We're out of time, but I, I would commend people to read the JFK admissions essay, which is a truly hilarious <laughs> document in which JFK says why he wants to go to Harvard. The reasons I have for wishing to go to Harvard are several. I feel that Harvard can give me a better background, a better liberal education than any other university. It goes on like that. Point being, though, this has been a finishing school for the elite for a very long time. Joy totally. Reid, um, that was, thank you so much. I know I, I kept you long at work tonight, but I truly and genuinely appreciate you coming thank on. That's you. fantastic.